Hi everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well. And welcome to another episode of Hard as Nails Earwax. And this particular case was somewhat difficult. Um, it needed to be done today. Um, there was no way that I was gonna send this patient away for a week or two weeks of, of olive oil and to come back. The reason is this patient is a serving police officer and the ear that I'm working on at the moment is his radio ear. So he wears an earpiece, obviously, and the case history is not particularly complex. It's just, you know, his hearing has been feeling a bit muffled. His ear has been feeling a bit full. It's been getting worse and worse and worse. And then eventually it just hit critical mass where whatever tiny gap was left for sound to get through to reach the eardrum, you know, that closed and he, he became you know, very hard of hearing in that ear and was unable to hear through his earpiece. So he's come to see me. This is the situation here. Again, not necessarily ordinary earwax here. We do have the classic sort of earwax, dead skin, hair matrix, which is extremely resistant to suction, very, very hard to deal with. And um, you can see here I'm going in with suction and a little bit of olive oil. Really what I'm doing here is just sort of probing the situation, just teasing the wax and just seeing how easy it will be. A little bit more olive oil in here. And you'll see that mostly I'm going in at the edges. I'm, I'm, I'm testing the periphery and dragging it into the center and just moving it around to see if there's any kind of movement there whatsoever. Um, so this is just sort of the, the initial stage of investigation, I suppose. Ultimately, the thing that will save the day is a Cawthorn hook, which you'll see in a moment and you've seen on other videos as well. Um, but it is just a very, very, very tiny metal hook. Um, so there it is. This is a number six, and I'm going in on the side here. The lovely thing about this tool, and I'm sure I've mentioned it in other videos, but it is small enough to, to kind of not press into the side, but, but you know, encourage it in between the canal and the wax, just so you can get some purchase, and then you can, and then you can start tearing bits away. Um, whereas with a St. Bart's hook, it's just too large to do that. Um, so what I'm doing here is just disturbing the wax plug, disrupting it. And the idea here is that I'll move back and forth in between the hook and the suction. And whenever I've, you know, created a little bit of a mess with the hook, I'll go in again with the suction, clear everything away. And we'll do this in stages until I can kind of get to a stage where I can get the hook in deep enough where I can drag the plug out in one piece essentially. Um, so there's a little bit of movement here now that I've disturbed the plug. And you, you may be thinking as well, um, if the hook is so good and you're able to slide it in, um, in on the side without hurting the patient, why don't you just slide it in all the way? Uh, that would be somewhat dangerous because I'm, I'm not sure where the eardrum is and, or I don't know how shallow or deep the ear canal is. So typically an ear canal will be you know, anything from 25 to 30 centimeters long. It varies hugely, but sometimes they can come really shallow. Sometimes they can come really long. And what you definitely don't want to do is just kind of shove, shove the hook in blindly and just keep on shoving it because you might hit the eardrum. Um, and whilst that probably wouldn't be, you know, an instant perforation or anything like that, it certainly would be disaster, particularly if you shoved the hook in and then the tip of the hook got embedded somewhere uh, and then you can't, you know, you yank it out and, you know, the patient finds that painful and then you have a hook stuck in there, which would be a complete disaster. So I only tend to shove the hook in maybe a few millimetres, just enough to get me purchase on the debris that I can see. So we never go in blind. Back in with the suction again, just teasing the wax plug here. And some of you may be wondering, how could this have happened? Was it his earpiece? Um, I don't think so. The earpiece that he wears, which is connected to a radio, goes over the ear. So he's not necessarily inserting anything inside the ear. But how has this happened? Well, it's difficult to say. He, um, he didn't report any cotton bud usage, which is the first thing that I suspected. Um, but he did admit to sort of shoving his finger in his ear from time to time. That could have been the case. Um, in terms of how this has happened, um, a really good video to watch actually is the, the uh, five reasons not to clean your ear video, which I did earlier, and I'll link it down in the description box below. But essentially there are many different reasons why you might get this hard earwax plug. 
Um, the primary reason that people get it is because it's been, you know, the wax has been smushed backwards and compacted. Um, the other reason is it's, um, it, it's, it's dry. So you have sebaceous glands in your ear canal, just like you have sebaceous glands on your scalp, for example, which secrete this kind of oily, fatty substance. And if those are underactive, or you've shoved the wax deep down in the ear and you've pushed the wax away from those glands, and they're only in the first third of the ear canal, um, then the wax will dry out and get hard and crusty. That may have been what's happened here. And we can tell that the wax, it's probably been pushed down because of the color of it. So you, obviously there's some nice yellow orangey bits there. But um, a lot of the debris is actually very, very dark, almost black. And that's a sign that it's old. So I rather suspect that at some point he's jabbed something in his ear that's pushed the wax down, it's compacted, and then the, the debris behind the wax cannot get out and it's just sort of built and built and built in and then it's reached critical mass essentially. So we've got a little bit more disturbance of the plug here and I'm going in. The suction at this point is, although it looks weak, I've cranked it up to about minus 500 millimeters of mercury. And there's just a little bit of movement here now. And I would love to actually go in with crocodile forceps, but I just know that if I go in and close the jaws, it'll just, you know, smush on the face of the wax and it won't do anything. Um, so we're going to have to play a little bit more with the hook and suction. But there is some movement there, which is encouraging. And the ear canal, you, you, you probably won't be able to tell at this stage, but the ear canal, when we take it out, as you can imagine, um, the ear canal will look very sore. So I'm just, I'm just moving back and forth just to see if I can encourage it out any further. And we're gonna have to go back in again with the hook, going around the bottom. And it's at this point now that I'm confident that I can actually get some leverage there. But again, the hook's just dragging through. One thing, one, I would say, improvement to this hook would be to make the, the, um, the face of the right angle, the face that's closest to the handle, would, to make that flat, that would be amazing. So again, I've got way more leverage now than I had before, and now you can see that the hook is, uh, sorry, the, uh, the plug is starting to move as one, and that's when I know, okay, there's been enough loosening, there's been enough disturbance, and now I can actually get it. And we're just gonna keep on working with the hook to see if we can, you know, grab the whole thing in one piece and there we have it and you can see the amount of hair that's matted in with it which again is, is another reason which would make the plug very very difficult and hard and impervious to suction or irrigation for that matter so there we go the olive oil is definitely serving a purpose here it's just lubricated the ear canal so we can drag it out as one and there we go you can see how black it is as well and let's just give the endoscope a wipe as well And there we have it. So it's not, whilst it's not gigantic, you could very clearly see from the footage how tight it was in the ear canal. Just a little bit of debris left behind and we can suction that, and that's just dead skin. But you may catch a glimpse there of the ear canal, just how red it is. And there is a little bit of abrasion there. There's a little hematoma there, but it's not huge. Um, by hematoma, I mean bleeding underneath the skin. So there we go, very, very pink ear canal, but lovely looking gray eardrum there. There's the plug. So it's about a centimetre in length, I would say, half an inch. Um, but again, I suppose size is, rel uh, size is relative. And, uh, you know, for a, for a slightly small ear canal, that's a lot of debris. Um, and if it's tightly packed in there, it can cause a lot of discomfort and hearing loss. There's the tube. And it's not a huge amount in there. Again, just bits and pieces as we were sort of disturbing the wax and, and wriggling it around. But uh, there we go. I hope you found that entertaining and interesting. That was episode two of Hard as Nails Earwax. Undoubtedly in the future, there will be an episode three, four, five, and so on. Um, stay tuned for that. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. I will try my very best to get back to you. And as always, I will see you on the next video.